Hi guys, my name is Daisy Favor and today I learned something from the book of Judges chapter 6 and chapter 7 and I would like to share what I learned about Gideon. Yes, and please you can go through it for more information. I'm going to share some of the things I learned and I really hope you will be blessed. So uh, from chapter 6, the chapter begins by showing how the Israelites had sinned against God. They had gone against his commands as they were doing all through from chapter 1 in the book of Judges. And every time God would raise a judge to deliver them. So in chapter 6, they sinned against God and God gave Midian over to them. Uh, they really used to oppress them. They used to... <clears throat> uh to to be specific they used to waste their land if i should say that uh, you can go read it has a lot of information in that sector and i know you're going to see it and so my main emphasis is about gideon uh the angel of the lord appears to gideon and as that at, at that time he was beating wheat in the wine press. Okay, I don't know how that was in those days, but the insight I got from this is that Gideon was not just sitting down and waiting for God to use him, you know, and send him to deliver the Israelites from the hands of the Midianites. Uh, Gideon was doing something. He was not just sitting around. He was busy in the place where God had placed him. And the insight I got is that uh, is that we should not just say, no, God may have called you to do something, may have, to, have told you to do something, or you feel that God is going to use you for greatness. Yes, it's true, but don't just sit there waiting for God to use you for greatness. Remember the story of Moses, like in the burning bush. Uh, he was in the like okay for the for God to appear to him through. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. He, uh, at the time of the burning bush, he was feeding his father-in-law's flock. Look at David when Samuel came looking uh, to the house of Jesse to anoint him. Where was he? He was in the field tending his father's flock. So even for you and me, we should not just sit around and wait for God to use us. Let us be faithful uh, wherever God has called us to be. And I know he will see us through and he will call us. Then something else, when the angel appeared to him, he told him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Uh, the insight I was getting from this is the set apart, you know, being set apart for God. And in most of my photos and in my status, I always write set apart for his glory. And we can see that Gideon, despite a time where the Israelites had sinned against God, like, you know, how the chapter begins, it's like the Israelites had sinned against God. They were giving rever they were paying reverence to the gods of the Amorites and all that. But in the midst of such a wicked people, in the midst of such a generation, Joshua stood out, you know, and that is why God appeared to him. And the angel of the Lord told him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. This shows me that even in the midst of a wicked society, you know, you're living in a generation where people don't really fear, have fear for God, especially as the youth. And it's really sad, but I'm encouraged that even in the midst of such a generation, God expects me to stand out and I can be set apart as Gideon was. The other thing is that the angel tells Gideon, you mighty man of valor. And you can see his response as he says that he is the least in his family and the clan is the weakest in Manasseh. This is, the, this is how we see ourselves, you know. As Gideon did, he saw himself as the least in their family and the wicked in Manasseh. But what did God see in him? God saw a mighty man of valor. This shows me that I should not depend on what the circumstances around me make me feel as if I am. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I've said, but 
the point is you should see yourself as how god sees you like don't depend so much on your weaknesses of course we all have weaknesses we all have we all feel timid once in a while but what does god say about you what does god see in you try to see yourself through god's eyes and that that way you're going to be able to accomplish more i love that phrase that the lord is with you you mighty man of valor it really encourages me that though Gideon was fearful, oh, I'm the least in my family, oh, you know, and something that amazes me if you read all through in the Bible, God uses those who seem unqualified, you know, not all these people who are, who are like, hey, you know, praise God, you people, praise God, brethren, you know, and all that, okay, sometimes God, actually, most of the times, God uses those who seem weak in people's eyes, and there's something he says in first corinthians 1 27 um the foolish things of the world to put okay i'm just paraphrasing i had read some days ago the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and chooses the best things of the world and the things which are despised that no flesh should glory in his presence i got this when i was reading about uh jail from the book of judges i think it was chapter four yes so you can go read about jail maybe i'm going to share about it in another video uh, but god can use you god can use you don't despise yourself don't see yourself as if you're unqualified uh, in god's sight there's nothing as being qualified look at david when samuel went to anoint the king of israel uh, he started with kina Eliab, you know the sons of jc and you know for jc they didn't even consider that he have another younger son it uh, he came about as a by the way when uh, all the sons of jc had passed you know as in none of them uh, were was chosen by god to be anointed and that is when jc remembered oh we have another kasan a koko kwa field ana lisha ngombe or something so don't despise yourself god may use you don't see yourself as unqualified just if god calls you to do something go ahead and do it because uh it's not about what people say about us it's about what god says about us and if he sends you to do something go ahead and do it because he will be with you as he was with gideon uh then another thing i see is that gideon asks for many signs of confirmation first of all the first time he told the angel of the lord uh, wait here i go and get you a gift then i'll come back so he went took some unleavened bread some meat and broth and when he came back he found the angel of the lord and the angel of the lord told him to spread the bread and the meat and pour the broth on it and he made a fire to burn them so that was the first confirmation that gideon needed uh, the second one is he told god to uh, he laid a fleece on the ground and told god to make it wet yet the let the rest of the land to remain dry so when he came back in the morning it was as such the fleece was wet he actually when he rang it uh, when he rang it uh, it gave a bowl of water and the rest of the land was dry on the third day he told god again show me another sign and he told him to make the fleece dry when the land was full of and make the land full of dew when god did that he confirmed it to him the fourth one the last one is when god had told gideon now i have after he had even chosen the army uh, now i've given you over to the midianites and then he told him if you if you still have fear in you you can go to the tents and listen and yeah then you'll get a confirmation so gideon went with pura and they went to a tent and they had some people speaking one had gotten a dream had got a dream about uh how how a cake of barley had fallen upon the camps of the Midianites and the camp of a tent. And the other person interpreted the dream and told him that um, 
it meant that God would give uh, over the Midianites to Gideon and that was a confirmation to Gideon and it gave him strength and courage to move forward. So what I learned is that I think it's not wrong to ask God for a sign. If probably God has called you to do something and you're not sure of it, it's okay to ask him, God, show me, assure me what you want me to do. It's, it's, it's okay from what you see from the word of God. But it's also, to, it's also very important to be careful uh, for imitations. Yeah, there's a friend of mine who has ever shared that sometimes the devil may bring imitations, things that may look good, you know, things that may look almost like what you had wanted from God, yet it's not from God. So it's always good to be careful, ask the Holy Spirit to confirm to you, and he will guide you, I know that. Yes, then another thing is that Something I learned from Gideon is that he was very fearful. Right from when the angel of the Lord appeared to him all through, he was very fearful. But one thing, despite of him being fearful, he went ahead to do what God had called him to do. From the first part when he was told to destroy the altar of Baal and Asherah, he, he was afraid to do it during the day, so he went ahead and did, did it at night. So uh, it's important to obey God. We may have fear to go forth and do what God requires of us, but at the end of the day, it's important to obey God. What God requires of us is obedience, and it's important to go ahead and do so. Fear may be there. You are not, you're not the first to fear. Gideon was afraid. I'm so afraid. Okay, yes, that's why I'm getting so many distractions. But yes, but go forth and continue to do what God requires of you. And because, sorry, because he will be with you and he will guide you. Then the last thing I learn is from the choosing of the army. The, at first, there were 32,000 men. 32,000 men, you know, ready for war. And God told them, ah, these people are too many. I need some to go away. And those who were afraid were told to return home. And 22,000 went home. They remained 10,000, 10,000 men. And God said, ah, these men are also too many. I can't work with such a crowd. And he made, uh, he told Gideon to ask them to go, I think, to the river. And those who those who knelt down and drank with their arms were 300 and they're the ones god chose the others went home so what i learned from this is that god does not work with a crowd sometimes or actually many times we really love doing things with our friends you know with our loved ones we love it we love doing things as a crowd but sometimes god requires you alone as a person or with a few other individuals to go forth and do what he has called you to do he does not really work with a crowd that he oh kujini see what it when then start kafanye god because sometimes god calls you alone and sometimes it may be difficult you may feel i am i the only one can she go can't we be a crowd, eh? you know, like a group, we go together and, you know, have a good moment as we do what God has called us to do. But yes, it's just important to understand what God requires of you at that particular moment. He may need you to do something without your friend, without even your spouse, without anyone, you know. Sometimes he may call you as an individual to do something. So it's important to be careful to not to just wait for others at the wasiwanze pia mimi nitafuata and probably he has already given you a go ahead so just go ahead and do what god has called you to do so that is what i learned from gideon i really hope you've been blessed i'm sorry for yes i'm sorry for wherever i may have had distractions i was looking outside but yeah i really hope you've been blessed and i look forward to do more videos i don't know i don't know i just don't i don't know <laughs> why I, I, i'm not able to do videos frequently uh, i prefer writing you know instead of speaking out but i really hope you've been blessed 
and looking forward to see you in more videos may god bless you may god see you through may god keep you may god use you and may you be careful to and sensitive to listen to when he's calling you and what he's calling you to do and obey be faithful and obedient may god bless you bye